Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And yes, the package finally arrived after taking a very long detour. So I will be having videos for the upcoming Stamp Timber limited edition exclusives. No promises that I will have. In fact, I will not have videos for every single one that are still going to be released this month because um, I didn't receive all of them. And no promises because I am now working with zero runway. But got one up, done, editing it right now, filming my intro. For those not aware, the Stamp Timber limited edition exclusive collaborations are only available from Simon Says Stamp while supplies last through the month of September. So either they sell out or they are just discontinued at the end of the month, which is very, very rare. And once they're gone, they're not restocked. Um, I will link though to um, the brand that is doing the collaboration with each video because there's always like so much inspiration, so many other products, etc. This is all just for fun and sharing inspiration and collaborations and all the fun things. And yeah, I think that's enough of the housekeeping. As always, links to everything will be in the description box below. The sets I used and all of the supplies, etc., etc. That'll be below. As long as as well as links to my social media, like my Facebook page, Instagram, my Patreon, etc. That's all below as well. But that's enough of an intro. Let's get into making the card. So this limited edition collab is with Alex Siberia Designs, who is a fairly new company. They are they are sort of brand new. They came onto the scene a year ago last year something like that um i've been a fan of their stuff for a while now i was kind of excited that simon started carrying their products a few months ago and uh stay tuned i might have more projects coming using uh this brand in future videos but uh yeah like i said i'll have a link to the line in the description box below the video for you guys to check out because they've got a kind of a unique take on a lot of things and I love it. I love it. I love seeing new people getting into card making, new brands, all of it. It's fun. So this is the A New Dream stamp set. And y'all know, big florals. I was like, perfect, perfect. Love it already. <laughs> so I stamped the image onto some Canson XL watercolor paper. I used my antiseptic powder tool, stamped it with VersaFine Clair Nocturne ink, and I heat embossed it with Wow's Clear Matte Dull Embossing Powder because I like the raised edges. You know, it keeps everything a little more contained. And the this embossing powder, it doesn't look embossed because it, after it's melted, it just, as it cools off, it goes dull instead of shiny like normal clear embossing powder. I've raved about this in many, many videos over the years. It's just, it's been a while since I've used it in a video. I don't know why, but anyway, so I heat embossed it. And then for my watercoloring, right this little moment here, this is real time, not sped up. Although honestly, this entire thing of watercoloring took me like 15 minutes. One, because I really didn't have time. I am rushing to get this done, like ripped open the package and started, just sat down and started filming all the things. Anyway, um, I'm using Distress Oxide inks. Now I've sped it up here uh, to do my watercoloring and just keeping it simple with my little water brush. I mushed um, Lumberjack Plaid and Villainous Potion Oxide inks onto just my little plastic palette here. And I got the area wet first with the water brush with just clean water. And then I painted on the inks. And that's it. Just simple. I was purposely using a bit of a lighter hand, which is something I always struggle with because I want to like slap it all on, all the color, all the saturation, all the things, you know, <laughs> and also make it rainbow and add splatter. But I went in with a lighter hand because these are two very intense colors, you know, Lumberjack Plaid is a very deep red and Villainous Potion is just oh, the deepest, darkest purple. I love it. But I went in with that lighter hand so I get that like purpley brownie like you know almost maroon sort of color on these blooms 
And then for the greenery, I went with my just oldie but goodie favorite, Rustic Wilderness and Twisted Citron. I still don't know what it is about these two colors mixed together. They just, it's just perfect and I love it. So same thing, got the areas wet with water and then just picked up the color with my little water brush and basically slapped it on. So after I added a little bit more to some of the petals, just, just a smidge. I didn't want to overdo it. You know, I didn't want to go in and add more than I could handle sort of a thing. And then set that aside. And for my background, I used Simon Says Stamps uh, Rhythm Link Pinpoint. Yeah, Rhythm Link Pinpoint Plate. So this just pierces a pattern into this background. So it just kind of gives it a little extra something. And then I used Salvaged Patina Distress Oxide Ink and a blending brush. And concentrate that towards the bottom and then kind of blended it out basically to white towards the top. And I was just using a bit of post-it tape there so I'm not getting fingerprints along the bottom with um, in that ink. And then after I had done the blend, I put this in my splat box, of course. And I'm going to use Merry Mint Distress Mica Stain, which one... Always have to shake up the mica stains. Shake them up really, 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 really well. Make sure to get all that mica dispersed so that you don't clog the um, the the inner workings, really. And when you first spray this, it looks much more green. But when it dries, it dries very close to salvage patina and shimmer and sparkle. Cannot go wrong. So after that dried, I trimmed this background down just a little bit so it'll be slightly smaller than an A2 card front. So I trimmed it down to like four inches by five and a quarter and then the floral I fussy cut because the the set is available as a set and as the set with dyes again while supplies last um, but for me getting the the product and everything else I rarely get any of the coordinating wafer dyes with the collabs which is fine I would rather just I would rather have something than nothing especially after the ridiculousness of the last couple of weeks. So I just fussy cut these and then I backed them with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it'll be popped up just a little bit, give it a little bit of dimension. And I pulled out some of my uh, black and white doodle twine and I wrapped that around the background. And then as always, grabbed my little reverse tweezers to hold that little knot in place so I can tie my bow. Cause especially with Baker's twine, it does take practice. People comment about that a lot when I do show things like this. And it's like, you tie these bows so well. 20 years of practice. Literally 20 years. And I cannot stress enough. Reverse tweezers for the win. Especially when tying Baker's twine. Because it's twisted. So it, it, it gets finicky. But I've done hundreds if not thousands of bows over the years and I still struggle sometimes I just edit that out of videos <laughs> but yeah reverse tweezers for the win and and just practice you know I, I used to struggle a lot back in the day and I do have a video a really really old one it's one of my original ones on my YouTube channel so like back in like 2009 or something like that um how to tie a bow with ribbon or I don't even know what it's called but yeah it's there it's still there all my old really 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 old videos they're still there so anyway after I um adhere the florals I added more splatter of course I just used some white gouache watered it down a tiny bit used my fan brush splattered it that will dry back so it won't be like harsh white like as it dries it'll kind of soak up a little bit of the color underneath it because oxide inks etc are water reactive so I set that background aside to dry and then I took a scrap of black cardstock and I used my anti-static powder tool on that and I stamped the dream big sentiment from that stamp set with white pigment ink, coated it with detail white embossing powder. I'm going to melt that with my heat tool and then while I have my, you know, misty out again, I'm going to stamp the inside of the card as well. So my card base is going to be a top folding A2 white uh, note card and on the inside I'm going to stamp that floral image with the salvaged patina distress oxide ink and then after I stamp that I'll stamp another sentiment from this set with the Versafine Claire Nocturne ink and as always 
even with large images like this, when I stamp on the inside of the card, it is stamped with the intention that I will write directly over it. I won't write around it. I'll just write over it because the ex the insides are just extra. You just got to have a little something, whether it be just a sentiment or sometimes, you know, I go all out and add, you know, die cuts and pattern paper and all the things just because. So after I had the inside done, I took one of Simon's sentiment label wafer dies and I die cut that heat embossed sentiment. And then I took the little um, corner arrow, whatever they're, whatever you would call them, uh, dies. I have two of them. Um, the pack only comes with like, well, they come with a small one like this and a large one. But I have two packs of these sentiment labels because I bought a second set because I use these so much that it's just convenient for me to have more than one set. Because then I can die cut multiple things at once. So anyway, die cut those edges to give it that little flag end on the sentiment and then I also cut down some black cardstock to slightly larger than my card front panel so I'm going to adhere that to the black cardstock with big mama foam tape again gives it a bit of dimension plus it makes it easier to adhere because the of the baker's twine because then I can bump it up a little bit with that um, foam tape and then adhere that to my card base and then the sentiment I'm going to pop up with little foam squares because the florals are popped up with that foam tape so that just evens everything out and then once I've got that in place um, I went through my stash and I, I was like channeling these uh, little confettis when I was calling the florals I just I had them in the back of my head the whole time it's the Trinity Stamps fresh fig and port wine little confettis and yeah they're you know reddish and purplish and iridescent and pretty and they were just perfect and I, I think that's just what I was thinking of yeah anyway arrange those how I saw fit I, I've been asked a lot about doing videos on um embellishment placement I might it's I have a list <laughs> I have many lists you guys like so many lists of things I want to do, things I need to do, video ideas, yada, yada, yada. But for the most part, I just stick them wherever, just wherever, you know, I just mix up the sizes, somewhat triangle formations, usually odd numbers, but I also just kind of stick them wherever I think they'll look nice. But anywho, once I got those adhered into place, which is little dabs of craft tacky glue, that finished off this card. I'll turn on my little flashlight so you guys can kind of see the shimmer of that mica stain on the background. It's shimmery and sparkly and fabulous. And the texture of the um, pinpoint plate and then the florals and all the fun things. So like I mentioned earlier, I will have a link below the video to this set while supplies last. I'll have a link to the Alex Siberia Designs products at Simon, as well as everything else I used. They'll be listed and linked directly below the video. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.